you went to college and you started your own business. So talk to us about that. The whole college versus no college debate, you know, I think the biggest mm. thing is do you want to take on all that debt, right? So is it gotcha. necessary for you and is the investment worth it for you to take on that debt up front? Now, mm. I would say it's worth it, you know, if you're going to be a professional work in corporate America, be like a doctor or an accountant like I was, right? It's definitely necessary because it's things you're going to need to learn. But if you're, if you're really just out there being an entrepreneur, if you know what you want to do, if you, if you have a clothing brand, if you want to yeah. own real estate, right? It's certain things where you really don't need college for. I'm trying to give me a bag. 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 What's up? What's up? You are now listening to FY Fly the podcast. And I'm your host, Hassan Thomas, along with Remy, and we are here to share tools on how millennials can budget, save, invest, and understand student debt and credit to achieve financial freedom. If you're a high school student, college student, or someone who's interested in gaining more financial insight, this podcast is for you. I'm trying to give me a bag. I'm trying to give me a bag. I'm trying to give me a bag. What's up, what's up, my FY Fly folks out there? How y'all doing? I hope y'all doing all right. Welcome to the FY Fly Podcast. My name is Hassan Thomas, aka the kid that did and the man that can, baby. And today, we're going to be chopping up with the founder of business consulting firm, Event U, real estate investor, and financial literacy rapper, Mr. Brandon Madden, man. How you doing, bro? How are you? I'm doing well, brother Hassan. How you been? All is well on my end. Good, good. I'm happy to hear that, bro. I'm happy to hear that. Happy to have you here because we was connected by my man, Rakeem Sabri. Big shout out to him. Big shout out to him, man. So I'm super happy to have you here, bro. We're going to rock out for sure. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So really here at FYI Fly, we like to skip the fluff and get right into the good stuff, my brother. So since starting your company, Invent You, what would you say the biggest lesson is that you've learned along your entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, definitely. I would say the biggest lesson I've learned is how to strategize, right? Create a plan implement that plan and then reassess that plan after you you went ahead and, and took the action right so you want to see what has worked what didn't and what you can optimize and i think a lot of entrepreneurs make that mistake of just pretty much going at it off of passion but not really having those kpis to measure and monitor their business and so uh -huh. they don't really have a plan of action they don't know if they're going or coming they don't know if they're increasing or decreasing they're, yeah. they're really just running off of passion and passion is good sometimes but uh, the thing that i've learned best is to you know set up a plan analyze that plan and always you know review it at the end bro and i feel like and i'm so glad you touched on that because i feel like something that I need to prove with on my end is my podcast metrics on what certain demographic is listening to the podcast so I can understand that and then start to, you know, craft more messages and really feed into that audience. Because my thing is, you know, when we're reaching out and we're just putting out this kind like kind of like blank blanket content to everybody, what they say if you if you shoot at everybody, you ain't going to hit nobody. You ain't gonna hit anyone, so it's like you definitely, definitely need to plan that out. And I want to get your thoughts, and this is something I really wanted to talk to you about because nowadays, I would say probably like the last what three to five years, like the 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 switch or the shift between college versus no college. You know, especially with the entrepreneurs beginning to you know, really run this social media game and it telling people, oh, you don't need to go to college. You know, put that put that time and invest into yourself and, you know, start your own business or this and that, this and that. So I want to get your thoughts and your personal opinions because you went to college and you started your own business. So talk to us about that and, you know, getting your MBA and congratulations on that as well, bro. Hey, thank you. Yeah, man, so the whole college versus no college debate, you know, I'm the first person to tell somebody start a business, right? That's all I wanted to do my entire life. That's all I did ever since yeah. I was young, right? I always I always had a business. I was always selling something. But at the end, you know, I still end up going to college. And I think when you look at if it's necessary versus not necessary, I think the biggest mm. thing is do you want to take on all that debt, right? So is it I necessary see. for you and is the investment worth it for you to take on that debt up front? Now, mm. I would say it's worth it, you know, if you're going to be a professional working corporate America, 
be like a doctor or an accountant like I was, right, or, or work in finance. It's definitely necessary because it's things you're going to need to learn. It's certain structures and, and, you know, rules, laws that you're going to have to learn, right? But if you're, if you're really just out there being an entrepreneur, if you know what you want to do, if you, if you have a clothing brand, if you want to yeah. own real estate, right? It's certain things where you really don't need college for. However, it is also good for the network, Big uh, whether it's like LinkedIn or being around people your age. It's also an experience. Personally, me. You know, I went back and did my MBA, so I guess I would choose the college. But like I said, yeah. all of that, even the MBA helped me in my business. I learned things in my MBA program, and mm. and within a month later, I was able to package up, package it up and sell it. So that MBA program helped me. It's helping me with the work I'm doing in schools also right. from a credential standpoint as well. So, yeah. Love that. Love that, bro. And for the folks listening, you know, there's definitely different ways to, because I think your main you know, point that you said was if you, if, if you're okay with occurring all that debt, then, you know, you can go to college or you should go to college, but there's also ways that you don't have to incur all that debt. Like, you know, maybe going to community college for those first two years, cutting your, you know, tuition bill really in half, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's definitely multiple ways, scholarships, grants, taking dual credit courses in high school, multiple ways for you to kind of you know lower or decrease that tuition bill so you don't take on a lot of that debt and still get that great education and that great networking that you were talking about right right for sure for sure most definitely most definitely so i really want to focus this topic or this conversation around entrepreneurship a little bit bro and i saw that you were giving you know some business advice and one tip was to you know focus on your niche why do you think that's so important whenever you're just getting started out into a business? And for the folks that may not even know what a niche is, can you like break that down for us a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So a niche is pretty much your target, right? So let's say it, it, it's your demographic, but it's very specific, right? So you mm. can say a niche would be maybe you want to work with accountants and only accountants and you want to provide services to that demographic, right? That would be a uh -huh. niche market as opposed to just saying maybe anyone who has a business or even a step above that saying anyone yeah. who has a service-based business, right? So you can go at the top. It's like anyone who has a business, niche down a little bit more service-based businesses. Then you niche down a little bit more and you would be working with only accountants, right? Mm. And so, so that's what a niche is. It's getting super clear and super specific on who you're actually working with, who you're looking to work with. Makes sense. Yeah, so in, in terms of starting a business, one tip that I would focus on and why niching down is so important is because it mm. helps you be laser focused. It helps you be more efficient in your marketing and in your solutions, right? What solutions are you providing? I think that's the most important thing. You want to be able to mm. understand that client's pain points. You want to be able to say, hey, I've been in your shoes, right? So for yeah. me, as a past, an ex-accountant, a reformed accountant, uh -huh. right, now entrepreneur, it's like I completely understand what our, what our accountants are going through in the wintertime between December and March, right? Like you literally yeah. can't come outside during those, don't, during those time periods, right? And mm. everyone who's an accountant knows like busy season, you like literally live in your office, right? But that's a pain point that only accountants would feel and understand. Mm. Uh, so that's why it's important to really know and have your niche because also you can empathize a lot better with them and empathy is really the key to business and, and making that conversion on your sale. So, mm. so it's really important to understand who you're speaking to and why you're speaking to them. Agreed 100%, bro, because whenever you feel, whenever your audience feels like you understand them and you're actually speaking to them, they're going to be way more receptive. They're going to start to build that community that everybody's really looking for. So I think that's yep. to what you're saying is niching down, understanding your market. Like I was speaking to a woman named Kiani Epps on here, and her name is the Responsible Homegirl. Like that's her brand. And when she first started out, she was just giving out, you know, free game, free financial education. And then she looked at her analytics. She noticed that 95% of her audience was women. So what she did from there, she started crafting her message to, hey, sis, hey, 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 girl, did you get your head done today? You know what I'm saying? Like crafted her message. And that's when her engagement started going up because she really understood her audience. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you really have to look at those numbers, those KPIs, and like, all right, even if you, sometimes folks will feel like I'm leaving all this money on the table, 
but mm-hmm. you're really not right it's rich it's riches in the niches so yeah, yeah. big facts big facts and i want to get into that incident that happened to you in the fifth grade but that really you know set things off for you because like i said i was i was doing my research on you man and i saw that there was something that you know really sparked that flame inside of you bro so can you talk to us about that a little bit oh man yeah so in elementary school back in the fifth grade they introduced something called the stock market game now yeah. i don't know why i wasn't allowed to play it other folks played it right and and they were able to do that it was a investopedia the simulation so pretty yeah. much paper trading investing buying stocks with with like a simulated game and mm. i wasn't allowed to play it but they mentioned it was something called a stock market game so all i heard was the name or the word and they said oh you can make money from it so uh. ever since that day i was like all right well what's the stock market like i, I want to get close to this thing and since then i like fell in love with like stock tickers seeing yeah. the stock tickers, seeing the stocks going up and down i tried to do everything to get closer to that because i felt as if well one you know portfolio income is, is taxed is one of the lowest tax forms of incomes, right? So yeah. I figured, all right, if I can make most of my income, portfolio income instead of working income, I can just pay mm. the least amount of taxes, right? And work the least amount. So, so, so. but I, I just fell in love with it, man. So I went ahead and did accounting. Then I went back and did finance and actually started yeah. learning from a, a formal standpoint of how to like evaluate stocks, how to, you know, pitch companies, mm. decide whether a company was a buy, sell or hold. So it really just took me on an entire journey. I started reading the Wall mm. Street Journal and that was that was really it. That one, just knowing the word or hearing the word. And as a kid, normally if someone tells you not to do something or they say you, you're not allowed to do something, naturally as a kid, you're gonna wanna do it. So I Big think fact. that's what it was. It was, it was. it was a child in me that was so curious, but it took yeah. me throughout my entire life thus far. Said, oh yeah, I'm finna show y'all. Y'all gonna let me, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I guarantee no one, not, I wouldn't say no one, but 95% of, of those kids in my fifth grade class definitely aren't, you know, investing in anything at this point. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I can almost guarantee that. <laughs> so. And bro, you, you've mentioned that you, you know, studied finance. What would you say the biggest difference between like personal finance and just regular finance is? Like, did you learn, you know, all your personal finance, you know, gems or lessons? in finance when you went to your MBA program or like what what's the difference like compare those two for us yeah definitely so personal finance man you're gonna have to take your lumps right you're gonna have to learn on your own unless you listen to people like Hassan Thomas and the FYI fly podcast right like myself mm. as well or if there's you know business education and financial education in high schools I think now there's a huge push for that and that's something yeah. our team is working on with the invent your future program also but in terms of personal finance that's something you're going to have to learn, like I said before, mm-hmm. mainly on your own, right? Because it's, it's personal. So whether you you decide to get into credit card debt, whether you, you're doing a great job at budgeting, mm-hmm. um, you know, whether you're, you're, you're saving that money, you're, you're buying that house, it's something that's personal to you and you're going to have to make decisions. Everyone has like their top 10 personal finance gems, but it's yeah. really up to you to decide what your life is going to look like and what you want it to look like. And, and that's going to be a personal finance decision for you. Mm-hmm. Um, personal finance is really just talking about your money, like literally your money. Now, yeah. when we talk about MBA finance and, and finance that you would learn in, in a school, in, in like an undergrad or even corporate America, that's corporate finance. So you're looking at how to manage the corporation's money, right? Mm-hmm. How to grow the corporation's money. And that's the main difference. Personal finance is personal. The yeah. finance they teach you in school is so you can go out, work for a corporation, and and manage their money or manage someone else's money as a, as a wealth manager or a financial advisor so that's the main difference obviously corporate finance is a lot more rudimentary yeah. uh, there's a lot there's a lot more laws such as the sec rules right 1933 1944 1934 that you have to follow but uh-huh. that's the main differentiation is you're being trained on how to manage someone else's money as a fiduciary really so what do you think as far as like because i feel like the fundamentals are sort of the same as far as running your your company as the CEO and running your life as the CEO, you know, be the CEO of your life as well, because you got to budget and make sure that you're not, you know, spending more than you make, you know, you're going to have to, you know, you know, going to have those, that's basically the margins, you know, profit margins. And then compared to personal finance, you got to make sure that, you know, your income is more than your expenses. 
you know so I, I i think there is some similarities would you say or yeah there's definitely similarities i was speaking to i was speaking to, to a cpa the other day actually and she said oh i know uh -huh. you're an accountant because you manage your business finance as well right <laughs> and so i think i think it's just principles just yeah. principles right gotcha. i think once you have the principles and the discipline mm -hmm. you can you you'll be fine going forward a lot of corporations also won't hire you if you have bad credit and and, wow. and that's another thing we got to talk about right so uh, yeah. systematically keeping certain people out of out of the company mm -hmm. but dude, that's a whole different topic man but yeah if, if you're great with your personal finances and you have that discipline you mm -hmm. should be able to to manage your business right because you wouldn't there's, there's typically a rule don't spend on your business like you know out of your business bank account something you wouldn't spend on your on your personal right mm. and so so that's that's always been the rule even in corporate america don't use the corporate card for expenses in in excess that you wouldn't necessarily spend on your own personal card and bro i also wanted to touch back on you know when you said that people are going to have to you know learn and and kind of take their bumps and take their lumps i think we can avoid or make those lumps and bumps as minimal as possible from educating ourselves like you said listening to us listening to you listening to other people out there and kind of you know changing and shifting our mindset and what i like to say is balancing your entertainment to education intake mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like we don't have to watch netflix 95 percent of the day we don't have to watch you know crazy stuff on youtube for 95 percent of the day you know start we know watching YouTube and Netflix 70% of the day and then incorporating some podcasts, incorporating some educational YouTube videos because YouTube, you know, we call it what we call it YouTube University. You know, you can learn <laughs> almost anything on YouTube. So start, you know, kind of balancing that entertainment to education intake and really watch your life change just from those small incremental habits. So you won't run into those you know, oh man, I didn't know about, you know, credit card that I didn't know a, a credit card was other people's money. I thought that was free money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Switch it out. Switch out music with a podcast, right? You want to, you want to be able to substitute. You want to always be learning, but sometimes it is good to decompress, right? Everything in For moderation, sure. but, but you want to kind of make it a lifestyle so that it's not just, just as, just as natural as listening to music in a car is, right? You want to, you want to make it a lifestyle. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, bro, like, are you more personally, and this is not investing advice, you know, so don't try to come down on us. But I want to know you personally, are you more of a long term investor? Are you an ETF, an index fund type guy? Do you like to pick your individual stocks and rock out with them? Or are you just straight into the, to the real estate with it? What's your kind of like invest in flavor yeah man so so investing in the stock market helped me get started in real estate right okay. and so that's that's like the best thing about it i sold all my stocks and and i went, went and got some real estate but mm -hmm. i would say that the stocks helped me accelerate my income those gains from, from yeah. the stock market right in terms of whether you're doing options whether you're you know being a long-term trader like options is more so trading right it's, it's getting in getting out yeah. i would say that it's all about for me personally i love dividends because you get something and then you get another thing you get the dividend payment mm -hmm. and then you get more dividends quarterly or some summer monthly but yeah. i would say that i'm also a long-term investor so options are cool if you want to you know get money fast and, and have that multiple but uh -huh. i'm playing forever right so so oh, the no. play usually is to whether you want to use the options to get some quick money put it back into like stocks to actually hold the stocks, let mm -hmm. those appreciate over time, right? At least a year. So you can, if you want to sell it, you take advantage of the capital gains tax, which Talk is, that. you know, in the highest bracket is 20%. The next bracket is 15. And then the bracket after that, I believe it's either 10% or zero. I, I know they changed it recently, uh -huh. but that's kind of how you want to move it along. And once you're able to build up that money, that, that nest egg, you want to take it and invest in real estate. But here's a quick play, never yeah. sell your assets, right? So for me, I'm playing forever. I'm not selling anything because even your long stocks, game. yeah, even your stocks, like just like your 401k, you can take out a certain percentage of it and just mm -hmm. pay yourself back. So even if you have an independent brokerage account, the you know a lender will give you 50 to 75 percent of whatever is in your portfolio in cash uh -huh. right and a lot of folks don't Jeez. know that but you can do that right and so that i didn't learn that until i sold everything it was like okay i didn't need to sell everything i could have just got a loan but but that's also a play and even with real estate you know there's things like your heloc 
or you can refinance if you want and still hold the property. So you can pull cash out of the real estate, use mm -hmm. it to get another property or use it to, well, I would get another property at that point. So I'm forever with it. Yeah, forever. Well, I did see that you made you a real estate play. Was that earlier this year or was that last year? It was earlier this year, a couple months ago, actually. Yeah. Okay. Was that your first one? Second one. Okay. Yep. Okay. Talk to us about that kind of like the difference in the process from your first real estate play to your second one. Cause I'm sure you was more experienced on this second one. So talk to us about the, the difference between those two. Yeah, yeah. So the first one was more so just bought with a bunch of buddies. Right. Mm. Um, so it, it wasn't like an FHA. Yeah, group or like group a economics. Okay. My boy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Group economics. And so that was a, that was a quick one. It was a quick, quick flip. We, we, we got in there and got out. Right. And, and just split it up. And, and that was it with mm. my second one. It was more so single family, I guess. Mm. And then that one was used, you know, kind of like college housing, right? Using Airbnb to, instead of renting like the entire house to one person, we yeah. were able to just rent the rooms on Airbnb, right? Being that it's the large property, uh -huh. you can have multiple guests staying there in just in different rooms. And so that we were able to kind of triple our income potential, just yeah. doing it that way, as opposed to just renting to one person, renting all these rooms to one person. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So y'all are renting all those rooms out on Airbnb were you house hacking yourself? Were you staying there and renting out the other rooms or that was just a strictly rental property? Yeah, yeah. So staying there, mm -hmm. le leasing a couple of the rooms, Airbnb a couple of the other rooms, gotcha. right? So yeah, definitely living for free at this point. Yes, yeah. sir. Big shout out, big shout out to the house hack. <laughs> yeah, house hack, man. I, I've been, I've been, I've been, you know, watching this play for years before I got my first place, right? And so I knew yeah. once I got my first place, I was like, man, I'm going to swallow my pride and I'm just house hack it, you know? And, and mm -hmm. I, I listened to Doug Depp. I'm like, man, I'm about to go sleep in the garage because yeah. I got a couple more bedrooms to list, you know? So uh -huh. definitely, definitely a house hacking. And I feel like also something that, you know, for a lot of, you know, a lot of people that haven't, you know, gotten on the Airbnb wave, they believe it's unsafe you know, to have, you know, they're a little worry about having, you know, randoms in their house, you know, in their rooms. How have you dealt with like the, the safety issues, safety matters when it comes to Airbnb? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, obviously there's things like you have to provide your government ID. Sometimes the guests will have reviews for me personally in our company, we want to have a conversation with the guests before they get there. So even okay. if, even if they pass like Airbnbs, like background check and screening, we still have a conversation. We want to know why they're coming, yeah. who's coming with them, how long they're staying. And if, if they, you know, answer our questions in a way that's not sketchy, we definitely let them, you know, come on in. Sometimes yeah. you'll ask folks questions and they'll, they'll be really sketchy with it or not want to answer your questions. And at that point, that's kind of like a red flag. Uh -huh. So just, and I don't, I don't rent to a in in state folks, right. Or in the same city, really? right? Like if, if you live in the same city, why are you getting the Airbnb in the same city down the street? Right. So it's kind of okay. like, you, know, you want to just, I mainly look at tourists, man. Like just keep it to tourists. I know they're going to try to leave. They're not going to try and, you know, stay there and, and, and start squatting there. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. that make that, that makes sense it sounds like somebody you know or, or you heard a situation about some folks who've done that in new york possibly it's happened to me before i had oh, folks who right down the street right so yeah it was it was just a weird thing it's like hey you probably don't really need this like uh, and you denied them yeah definitely okay it's it must be something going on like yeah mm, you say y'all ain't finna trap out my spot <laughs> hey man listen i don't know what they're doing but why well, they right. can't do it at their house down the street so yeah that's all it is yeah big facts man big facts man but i want to go ahead and get into this fin lit man this financial literacy because this is fy fly a show about financial literacy which is not only understanding how to budget your money but being able to grow your money effectively and efficiently so bro, can you give us a good money habit that you have and then also a bad money habit that you had that we could cut off? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. A good money habit that I have is saving at least 20% of everything that I make and paying okay. myself first. So I'm, I'm paying myself first and that's what I mean. It's like, yeah, I'll get, I'll get paid. The richest um, man in Babylon, huh? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes, so sir. You, you, need, you need that even if it's just a little bit. Whatever, whatever you can put to the side for yourself first is, is what I put to the side. Then you can, you know, go ahead and, and pay your bills and then maybe you can have something else, whatever's remaining from that, you want to invest the rest of it. So you want to make sure that you, you have something put to the side for yourself in cash 
you pay your bills and then you can invest the difference. Okay. So that's a good habit. Something I would cut off. Me personally, I love convenience. So yeah. I don't know if I'll ever cut it off, but I, I'll Uber anywhere. Yeah. I'll, Uber, I'll Uber anywhere, man. I live in I live in the greater New York City area. So I'll, I'll Uber to a different borough if I need to, right? I'll Uber from the Bronx to Queens or, right, mm-hmm. from Queens to from Queens to New Jersey. Like, I'll, I'll go anywhere with an Uber yeah. and not feel bad about it. It's, you know, so that's probably something I need to cut off, but I, I probably won't. I yeah. mean, sure, it could be, <laughs> could be saving you some gas money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, gas money time waiting on the train or waiting on the whatever it is right if uh, i didn't have my car with me but yeah i'm i'm an uber guy so yeah okay okay and then i also have one final question for you bro i want to read you these two quotes and i need you to tell okay. me which one is more accurate in your opinion okay okay all right bet bet so the first quote is more money more problems like biggie you know you from new york so you're gonna you're gonna feel that one or money can't buy happiness which one do you believe is more accurate in your opinion Money could definitely buy happiness. Like, it, it, I won't say it makes you happy, but you uh-huh. can put yourself in a place around some people doing some things that'll make you happy, right? Like, you can go jet skiing. You can do a bunch of different things. You can go visit family with money, right? So uh-huh. I, I think it could make you happy. So I would say money, more money, more problems is definitely true because you get more money. Now you yeah. got to pay more taxes. If you can't pay those taxes, then it's a problem. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're if you making more money, you need to figure out how to make more money, right? And so it's it's, it's going to keep elevating. But sometimes yeah. those problems are good problems, right? So mm-hmm. I, I think more money, more problems is definitely true. And then of course, you have like the haters too. People that Fact. see you doing well and they're like, oh, what's this guy doing? Like, yeah. you know, so <laughs> it, it comes with a whole new thing. I think that's definitely true. Man, I... See, I like to say more money, more problems, more solutions. You know what I'm saying? Because if we're using the money as a tool, as it should be used, then we just use that money to solve the problems to so- because it's a tool. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's why I, I like to like to bring it there. But I definitely do feel what you're saying about the external, you know, now people seeing Oh, you you popping now? You got money? Hey, let me borrow some. Hey, I know you don't, but I feel like what people don't ever stop to think about is the expense that it costs that person to live that lifestyle, run that business. Like, okay, you seeing that person popping, you know, with 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 their new lifestyle and this and that, but you don't know, like you said, you 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 don't know the systems that they're paying for. You don't know the VAs that they're paying for. You don't know none of that. That they're paying for to still live and maintain that lifestyle you know what i mean at all it's, it's expensive to run a business sometimes right but you got to pay the cost to be the boss and that's that's exactly yes, what they mean there's a clip there's a famous clip diddy saying that he pays everybody so he doesn't have to do anything and that's <laughs> literally where i want to get to in life like that's literally where i want to get to i want to be able to pay everybody so i don't have to do anything so yeah, but it. but it's true you don't know what that person's you, you don't know my expenses. I got to buy a bigger place, you know, like Jay-Z once said. So uh, you, don't, you don't know someone's expenses, right, at all. Most definitely, bro. Most definitely. So thank you so much for joining the FYI Flop Podcast, my man. Please let everyone know where to find you, know where to reach you. And if you got any final words or final gym, go ahead, bro. Yeah, definitely. You can follow me on Instagram at Business by Brandon. Follow the company InventU.Consulting and InventU Future, all in the name of business and financial education. So definitely follow us. Go to InventU.com. And yeah, definitely looking forward to meeting all of you, staying connected. Thanks so much, Hassan, for having me on the FYI Fly Podcast. You did. Yes, sir, man. This is first of many collaborations between us, bro, between our businesses. We're both promoting the same thing. We're both passionate about what we do. So it's only co-elevation from here, my boy, for sure. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So for everybody listening, make sure that you're not only learning or just listening. Take what Brandon said today. Take the take the small gems and really start to apply those to your life. You know, I know we talked about a lot today, but find those keys that you can implement into your life and really watch your life change. So we're going to need everyone to stay safe. Stay invested and stay FYI Fly. We'll see y'all next week. Thank you all for listening to FYI Fly, the podcast, and we hope you enjoyed the show. Tune in next week for more financial literacy insights with our special guests. 
please visit our website, social media platforms, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at FYI Fly Podcast. That's FYI FLI Podcast. See y'all next week and stay fly.